So today we're going to be taking a look at a deep dive at the Ascent meta and where the meta has come from and where it might be going to. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look back at Masters Copenhagen a couple of months ago and compare it to what was going on on Ascent at Champs. And uh, back at Masters Copenhagen, we had a pretty balanced meta actually on Ascent and there was four main schools uh, of comps that were going around with each with a fairly decent play rate in that tournament. In fact, each of these four kind of families of comps saw anywhere from four to six games in that tournament and all were played by at least two teams. So it was a fairly balanced meta overall and I'm going to explain the comps what their kind of strengths and weaknesses are what they're trying to do for the most part uh, fairly quickly and then we're going to take a look at where the meta has shifted. So these are the four comps that were being played on Ascent. We had what I'll call the old meta comp. Uh, this is you know pre-jet nerf. This was the comp that everyone ran on Ascent for a while uh, and it's still stuck around uh, to this day. That's an old and Jet, Silver, Killjoy, and KO. You've got the DRX Triple Initiator comps where you get rid of uh, any Duelist uh, and you know you play the Astra, Fade, Silver, KO, and Chamber. You got the FPX Sage comps, which is again, no Duelist, bringing in a Sage instead, as you can see, going for the Fade KO still, uh, but bringing in that Sage. And then you've got the Paper Rex Raise comps, uh, which uh, you know were going all in on the kind of uh, Raise, Fade, Astra kind of tech, putting them all together and seeing if it works. And so just to give you a quick idea of all of these comps, let's run through them and talk about how they played out. So we'll start with the old meta comp, right? The Killjoy Jet comp. We'll start with that. And we're watching here again, one of the many games between Loud and Optic, but this one's actually at Masters Copenhagen. And Loud are pretty much going to start off here, which is the general default of this comp, right? What you're going to see is you're going to see a KO knife come in towards A. You're going to get a Killjoy set up towards B. Eventually the Killjoy is going to come in uh, and put a turret in B main. Uh, but normally a turret either goes on top of the little pavilion thing here or in B main instead. You've got the KO knife in here. You're going to get an omen smoke down in mid. The omen could smoke off uh, either side of mid. Uh, essentially, we're going to get a Sova dart in here towards mid as well. And this is kind of the default setup for this, uh, for a lot of what this comp does. The Killjoy is often towards B, uh, the KO is often towards A, uh, and the other three are, you know, either one side or, of the map or the other, and or playing towards mid as well. And from this, right, you've got basically pressure or some kind of, you know, help to control all sides of the map, and it's kind of flexible and you can kind of choose to what you want to do, common things might be getting the silvers somewhere in this corner or, or, or down here and, and droning up uh, either side of mid. That's something very common and the jet follows the drone and you're basically set up to go from there. But then this comp has stuck around for so long, even during the chamber dominant times, which, you know, Masters Copenhagen was perhaps the height of, because basically it's very flexible. It's the jack of all trades comp. And whilst I just showed you the default look of it, you can also do this, what Loud do in this round, where they're just going to go and hit B main straight away. You're going to get the Omen flash coming in very fast here. Uh, you're going to get a pop of the KO ult, a flash from Sadak uh, out there. You're going to get a really nice wrinkle where Pankata uses his Omen ult back here. Very weird indeed, but he actually manages to get a kill from it. If we come to the map again, you've got the turret in B main. Uh, but, you know, they're already running down into the site, right? They're coming down. You've got Aspas dashing on towards uh, the switch here with the jet smoke and you can see he's already up here right that's a very common thing as well you've got Sadak now flashing down uh, towards B uh, the kind of a uh Boathouse area, you can see we've got a Killjoy Nano Swarm just uh, put in there as well. And this is basically, you know, what this comp can do, right? You can play for that very flexible default, or you can just say, let's just hit a site, let's go. And in terms of defensive setups, this again is very common from Loud in this uh, same game, just going a bit further on, where we've got uh, Killjoy Alarm Bot here in mid, very, very common. You've got the Omen and the KO playing towards A, again, very common. What we're going to see is the one way put up here. you got the KO Knife here on A main as well, and that basically just gets complete control of this area and allows you know these players to just watch that one way with the suppression right no one's kind of coming past for a while uh, that's the kind of idea anyway you've got uh, more killjoy stuff like nano swarm turret set up here for b main with the sova helping with support as well obviously this could be an odin in the sova's hands in some rounds as well where you know he'll just stand here uh, and just spam uh, around maybe off the back of a dart and you've got the jet wandering in mid and the jet you know often with the op is going around in different positions in mid could be over here instead right just wandering looking for those kills with the op taking those aggressive fights and hoping to get that first kill and this is a very powerful early setup and I mean you can see how the start of this round goes where Ye tries to disrespect it and uh, pays for it with his life you get four suppressed you get great info and you know louder on the track to win this round fairly easily 
But now let's move on to the DRX Triple Initiator comp. And this time it's Leviathan who are playing it, uh, one of the masters of this comp. And actually defensively, it looks kind of similar to uh, the other comp as well. We've got our controller and KO still over here towards A. This time we have the Sova and Fade here towards B because now the chamber has become kind of our wanderer across mid. We've still got uh, an alarm bot down here in mid, but this time the chamber is free to wander on the different sides of mid, you know, maybe push up and get aggressive with his rendezvous and essentially is fulfilling the same purpose as the jet did there as well uh but what's going to happen and obviously one of the main advantages of this triple initiator comp is that you have a ton of info you just have so 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 much info between the ko knife the silver stuff the fade stuff the chamber trap right there's just a ton so you see they're gonna put in some utility here to be main none of it gets shot nothing goes on right so straight away Le leviathan have a very good idea of where this hit is coming in and they're kind of ready to deal with this a split you know straight away they have have the correct read right and that is kind of the advantage of this drx triple initiator comp very very strong defensively because you're always for the most part gonna be in the right space However, one of the main disadvantages of that DRX triple initiator comp was that you can't really just force it through a choke point like we saw Loud do a couple rounds ago with their with their old meta comp where the jet is dashing in. You don't have any dive aging. You don't have any of that space creation through a choke point. So when you group up and go through a choke point, it can be pretty deadly if you are all going through the same one, as you'll see in this round from Optic, because what they're going to do is they're going to try and run a little fake. You see the little fade haunt there. The drone was coming in towards A as well, right? They're trying to run a little fake and then they're going to come back uh, through uh, towards B all the way through mid. But the thing is, everyone's going to come all the way through mid. So it basically just becomes an absolute shooting range here for Xset uh, in this game where all of Optic you're going to see just start getting mowed down in this little area because they just don't have have any way of getting out of that area and this is a very common thing with this comp where if you do try and for force it through as a five person stack through any one of these choke points you know everyone can just focus all their attention in here right there is no like a, a smoke and jet dash in here to create a different angle that cryo or whoever else might need to worry about everyone can just focus on this little square and completely destroy you Moving on to the FPX comp, and obviously you might think without a duelist that that would be kind of the same thing here going on for uh, any team that runs this FPX comp with the Sage, no duelist. Why is it not the same? Well, particularly on B main, there is a bit of a difference because you can create a bit of a different angle with the Sage as Fnatic are about to show you here. So they're going to come in, same thing, right? They're going to try and exec onto the site. And what you're going to see is Alfia here. He's going to wall up in B main and just create a very different angle, right? This is a different angle. And they've also got the Omen instead of an Astra as well, right? So in this instance, both can TP across and you know get that bit of extra space creation and now you've got this different angle from Alpha Year as well that you know is causing some problems and you're going to see that Benkai is going to get caught off here by Alpha Year who eventually is going to you know find him and it's very difficult for Benkai to be able to deal with this as you see right there Alpha Year can just come swing out and kill him straight away on site it's a very very successful take for the side of uh, Fnatic in this instance and that's kind of what this FPX comp will do where you have this very powerful sage wall up here or you have two other walls that will commonly be used on the attacking side whether that be over here to do a b split or over here to do an a split as well and obviously defensively the sage gives you very good options in terms of stopping any fast push but also in this round just giving you some control that allows you to fight elsewhere Take your uh, look at Sugetsu here, who's going to just put a wall up uh, pretty soon uh, in B main. This is FPX against DRX. He puts this wall up and now look that because they don't have to deal with this and because that wall doesn't get destroyed, look at how you know free they all are essentially to now just come and fight DRX in this space in mid. And so it's just going to be an absolute firing squad. Four members of uh, FPX are there. Uh, Angel eventually goes to rotate towards a short to make sure no one's coming there. But whilst that's going on, artist manages to get a kill and you know they have no pressure coming from b main they feel secure so three players can just devote all of their attention to that one little area and then our last comp to talk about is the Paper Rex Raze comp. And here we actually have a mirror of these two comps. And this little round here is going to show us some of the themes and ideas that this comp is going for on both sides. So 
on the side of Paper Rex, they're on the attack side, and uh, as you will see in just a second, you can see that they've grouped up, and they are just going to go for a fairly fast A hit, right? And obviously with the raise, you can do that. You have a, a ton of good utility with this comp to just go for these fast hits if that's what you want to do. Uh, and on the defensive side, you can see, again, similar setup to what we've seen from some of the other comps. You've got your controller and the KO over towards A. You've got your chamber, who's kind of in mid and is, you know, kind of the flexible mid player. And then you've got the fade and raise over towards B looking to take, uh, you know, advantage of their strong uh, combinations, you might say, between their utility. So what's going to happen in this round is Paper X are just going to come down and they are just going to go for a fairly fast A hit overall. Jing is going to come in with his ult. And what we're going to see is uh, that uh, eventually... Uh, the rotates are going to come in, and you're going to see the general idea. So Jin comes in with the ult, he manages to get a kill. Call them enter a bit ratty here with the judge in the smoke, but then you're going to see what this uh, comp is trying to do on the defensive side as well. They send in that boom bot just there that is going to see uh, that Forsaken is down here in short, and then they're going to try here for this uh, seize satchel combo, but because it is Forsaken on the chamber, he is able to uh, TP out of there and uh, you know avoid that. But you can see overall what they're trying to go for on both sides of this comp. So that was where we were, but now where did things change going into champs? Well, if we take a look at the agent pick rates, you can see that from Copenhagen to champs, there was some differences overall. Let's start with the two controllers. You can see that Astra was actually ahead of Omen overall at Copenhagen, but that has now flipped and Omen was the dominant choice at champs instead. Now, one of the main reasons I think that is the case is because if you take a look at the pick rates of Raze and Fade as well, you can see that those two had a bit of a dip and I think during Copenhagen there was this general idea that Ray's fade and then adding an Astra into that as well because they have some nice synergies also was just completely OP right that that combination was just utterly the best and should be tried on all of the maps and is just going to work on every single map and that's where teams were kind of leaning towards but as you can see by the time we got to champs that kind of idea had uh, disappeared I mean it sticked around on some maps like Haven but for Ascent it seemed like that idea had kind of you know shifted a bit and you can see that certain agents like Raze and Fade saw quite a bit of a decline in pick rate. But while some of those agents did drop, there were some beneficiaries like Jet and Sova, as you can see, big gainers overall. And so you can see there was a bit of a shift towards those two agents instead of maybe a fade, instead of maybe a race. They're going back to the Jet and the Sova. And a similar sort of thing happened with the Sentinel class as well. Stage not being picked as much is somewhat due to FPX not playing as many games of Ascent as they did in Copenhagen, uh, but also the change of uh, Chamber and Kildre, where you can see that Kildre is getting quite a bit of an increase and Chamber is having a pretty big decrease overall. So you can see there's definitely been a shift. And if you actually look at the comps themselves and how often those were picked, you can see in Copenhagen between the four comps, it was pretty balanced overall uh, between them, you know, not too many games between them. But then at Champs, we've had a big shift indeed. You can see that the old meta comp of the Jet and Killjoy is really becoming the dominant one, particularly when you think about how many different teams use this comp or a variation of this comp, maybe where one agent is a bit different. Uh, but, you know, you can see eight different teams. That's half of the teams in Champs used an old meta or a variation of it at that tournament, which kind of shows where the meta is going. The triple initiator still did live on though, right? We still had quite a bit of use of that and we'll get to that in a bit. As I mentioned, the FPX Sage comp was only played by FPX and 100 Thieves and the Paper X Raze comp all, all but disappeared as Paper X were eliminated fairly early and they were the only team now that was bringing that Raze comp. So why did teams switch from their other comps to uh, this one more so, the old meta comp that Loud were running? Well, one of the reasons might be Loud. For instance, Optic, as you can see in this game, were running their triple initiator comp, but after this game, after they get destroyed by Loud, they decided to switch over instead to the old meta comp. Ye would play Jet for the first time in, in a long, long time indeed. And, uh, you know, a lot of teams were perhaps feeling that that was the best way to go. It's a fairly simple comp. You know, most teams have run this comp before. And as I said, it's kind of a jack of all trades, allows you to do a lot of different things. And so I think teams maybe felt a bit more comfortable with that flexibility. But there was one big other meta shift as well. And that was not just teams moving over to the old meta comp, but teams moving away from Chamber and putting a jet into their comps instead. Like DRX did, FPX also did this, although they've been known to do it before as well. Uh, but DRX did this in this tournament. They were the story on Ascent for me uh, because they played four games on Ascent at Champs and they won all four of those games. 
And uh, to me, the big, big difference here is that because when you add that jet and you take away that chamber, all of a sudden you can just force it through one choke point and you have some amazing execs, as you will see. I mean, particularly if you're DRX, of course, but as you're going to see here, right? Because you have a ton of utility. In goes the KO knife. That's going to clear close for them. And then just watch all this utility, right? The Astro Stars start coming in. You're going to get a Fade Haunt that just landed here that gets destroyed. The Prowler comes in, though, and now a Sovadar lands as well. You know, a Flash is coming in from the KO as uh, Buzz is dashing in onto the site. And what you're going to see, you end up with this. Right, FNS is revealed, he's being chased by a Prowler, and Buzz is right there to get that kill. If this is a chamber, you know, FNS can just sit there and he can just spam at the choke point and he's fine. But because the jet is dashing on and he's right in his face already, it's a free kill, right? And then also Buzz is going to manage to get mobbed as well because they just aren't ready for this, right? They're dealing with too much and essentially these sight holds were becoming impossible against DRX because one, they have very good executes, but two, you know, they just have an, a bombardment of utility and then Buzz dashing in off the back of that utility just makes it so easy for DRX to get those first kills on the site. And this round is pretty much over before it's even started. Now, of course, this comp, you remove that chamber, you add a jet. Of course, now it is lacking any Sentinel utility, right? But the thing is DRX were able to overcome that because they still had a ton of info gathering right you still got the three initiators to find out where those site hits might be coming uh sure you don't have you know an alarm bot in mid or something like that so that can cause some problems but you have some very good retakes as well right you I mean the jet can dash in for a retake as well where you essentially kind of become the attacking team again so you know they dealt with it okay and I mean even in one game they were 12-4 down and managed to win uh so on the defensive side as well winning eight defensive rounds in a row so so clearly their defensive side, you know, wasn't doing too bad. And so for me, the meta is only heading in one direction. We can pretty much kiss goodbye to the Paper X raise comps. Those are probably going to be gone from the meta overall. The FPX Sage comps might stick around with a couple teams, and I think you might still see that. But instead of this chamber, it might be removed for a jet instead. The triple initiator stuff might stick around as well, but again, without that chamber and going towards that jet. And most teams, I think, will be heading towards that old meta comp, the old reliable that everyone knows how to play, and that that will become the mainstay on Ascent again. And uh, you can pretty much expect a lot of fights between between triple initiator with jet or maybe just the old meta with the killjoy coming back.